might be hard to believe that time has passed by so fast that we are now just about a week away from the Call of Duty World War II beta, but that is in fact the case. That is how close we are. And while it is pretty crazy, there is a lot of stuff to know about the World War II beta coming up. And with that in mind, I figured, you know what? Let's resurrect a little bit of a series that we did right before the launch of Modern Warfare Remastered and Infinite Warfare this past year. And let's apply it to the World War II beta. So in this one, we're giving you guys 50 facts and 50 things that you need to know here for the beta, some pieces of information you may find useful, some cool trivia you might find to be pretty nifty, and other things like that. So with that said, we're gonna be talking about 50 things for Call of Duty World War II's beta, and let's jump right into it. Starting us off with numero uno, the very simple basics getting this out of the way. The beta begins on August 25th, now once again, just under 10 days away. We're so close. It feels amazing to actually think about that. Number two, if you're interested in seeing a little bit of the beta before it actually goes live, Sledgehammer is hosting a live stream giving previews of the beta build and the gameplay from Gamescom in Cologne, Germany on the 22nd. Third up, PlayStation 4 gets the exclusivity rights, and sadly that is kind of how that works out, but that breaking it down a little bit further is that one weekend is solely for PlayStation 4, and week two will be for both PlayStation 4 users and Xbox One users. Now, the fourth thing is that PC may or may not be neglected amidst the beta hype. Early marketing and promo materials listed a PC beta to be detailed and announced at a later date, but it has since been removed from recent marketing and promo materials, stemming the question on if it'll be there at all. Now, next, the beta could be extended in length. In the fine print, the beta is detailed as being a minimum of three days. We saw extensions in the Black Ops 3 beta, so it definitely is possible, and what it may end up being is three days for pre-orders and code holders, then open to everyone as we saw with Black Ops 3's beta, and I think Infinite Warfare actually did that as well. Players then also who take part in the beta will get a beta combat pack for the full launch of the game, which means you'll end up getting an in-game helmet customization item, emblem, and a calling card for the full game upon release in November. Now, the beta is very similar to E3 gameplay, or early beta or late alpha stages of the game build, whatever you want to call it at that. Visually, what you'll see is very similar to what we've showcased and detailed on the channel here for you guys many times already. So it's not going to be too much of a curveball, too much of a changeup, but there will be definitely a lot more to play around with and to see for yourselves come the beta. Now, there's three maps in the beta right now. Point to Hawk, which is the trench ridden one that we've featured here on the channel. Ardens, which is the snow map that we've showcased, and then Gibraltar, which is a completely new one even to me. So it'll be fun to see how it all plays out and the action that we can get on all three of these maps. War is going to be returning from the E3 demo and it will be playable for everybody. But whereas I'd normally say the only difference, it's actually the same operation breakout that we saw at E3. So the map layouts, if you've seen them from either my footage or somebody else's footage, if you've seen those, you pretty much have a solid understanding on how it'll play out. Capping off the first 10 here, there are three modes confirmed for the World War II beta, that being Team Deathmatch, Domination, and Hardpoints. All five divisions are also playable as well, including Infantry, Expeditionary, Airborne, Armored, and Mountain. Of course, that covers all the bases for the specific weapon types and everything like that, but all five divisions will be playable. Gameplay will be 6v6, that's something that I think a lot of people really kind of expected, but I did see some questioning whenever I was looking around for some things to throw in here in terms of facts, where people were wondering if it would be 6v6 or if there would be some sort of mode that included more people, but right now, 6v6. Rank progression is going to be available in the beta. Unlike the E3 experience I had, which was probably just because of local builds, minus the fact that the build was set specifically for demonstration purposes, you will be able to end up progressing your character through the ranks in the beta, but there's no set cap listed just yet, and it's also listed as limited progression. So, not going to be going up to the full rank, which I think was 55 that was confirmed to us at an earlier point in time for the full game. We're not going to quite be able to make it up to 55, but maybe like 35, 40, maybe even 45, who knows. Next up though, rank progression will actually be limited and at a slower rate. Now we saw this on Black Ops 3's beta where the level progression was effectively half of that of the full game where XP would not be granted as fast and thus players had a longer gaming experience in which they could look forward to more content coming, incentivizing them to play even more. So it's a nifty little cycle there that they set up. 
Now, next, all weaponry will not be present, and I like this. That's what absolutely killed me about Infinite Warfare's beta, because truthfully, when you have all the weapons laid out like that, it makes the game stale. You effectively play the same exact game in an Infinite Warfare's case from October and maybe even September, early September at that, if you were at COD XP, until January and February when the first DLC pack drops, with little to no change at all. So, that said, withholding things like weaponry here from this makes it so it doesn't become Come stale incredibly fast after launch, so I'm all on board for that. Score streaks will also be limited as well, and again, a nice touch here as to not give away everything up front. And what I'm interested to see here with this is what this means for the air quote potential nuke. I personally don't know. Infinite Warfare featured the deatomizer, but Sledgehammer has an interesting position on how their take goes about this. It's not a guarantee as a game ending or like overall kill streak, like a DNA bomb or something like that, like Infinity Ward has in all of their titles. That's pretty much a guaranteed thing at this point. Equipment and tacticals will also be limited. Basic training skills won't all be represented as well, which is interesting because this adds a dynamic to the creator class system and we won't see all of them. While basic training skills are essentially reskin perks, it'll be intriguing to see what is left out, what's available, and what's cut entirely. But we won't have access to all of that, so I guess we won't know everything at that point. While all that stuff is limited though, class customization will be present. Whereas in the E3 demo, we couldn't edit any of our classes, weapons, division skills, all that stuff. We'll definitely be able to do that within the World War II beta. You can get a little bit more of an intimate look at all these things within the brand new divisions and create a class system within Call of Duty World War II. So that's definitely something that I'm really looking forward to as well. Now, capping off that 20, we ended up getting the information that the headquarters will not be available in the beta. So things like the 1v1 death pit, theater, and other social gatherings won't be in the beta for experimentation and for people to check out for themselves at all. Now, the firing range will be in the beta. You'll be able to check out your weapons, loadouts, inspect animations, all that kind of stuff because this isn't necessarily in the headquarters, though it looks like it's designed to be. This is a part of the class customization and accessible through there. Now, supply drops will not be in the beta, and I think that's something that we can all agree is pretty nice, but as for what the cosmetics will be in the game, that's just for time to tell, and we'll have to wait until November to see how it all works out. Now also, group supply drops subsequently will not be in the beta as well. The new feature for the headquarters mode seems pretty cool that you can get social status out of that, but it won't be featured. There's also no ranked play in the beta coming, but ranked play is looking good for World War II, but we'll have to wait once again until the full release to see how it plays out. There's no competitive features at all in the beta, and on top of that, the game battles integration subsequently is absent as well. The huge implementation by Infinity Ward in Infinite Warfare was a huge step in the right direction for competitive COD, but it will be returning in November with World War II, just not in the beta build that we'll be playing next week. Now, the full map list also will not be present, and the full mode list will not be present. Just those that are in the game and the beta build at the time will be visible here with this. There's not gonna be anything like where we saw specialists where we saw that there were nine specialists in the Black Ops 3 beta, but some of them were locked and not able to be attained. So it's not gonna be like that. Only whatever is available in the beta build to play will be viewable out of all of that. Player customization may return, and a shot from the beta trailer showcased a squad of division-specific soldiers that were really all diversified and seemingly had customizable features on them. So while I don't think we'll get access to all the customizable features within World War II, I think the beta does hold in store a little bit here for us. The Molotov is confirmed as a score streak and will be in the beta, which is potentially odd seeing that it's a streak, but then again, the flamethrower is a streak too in World War II, and compared to other locations in COD history, it may seem odd as well, but really it kind of works out as its own. The Type 100 is confirmed for the beta, as is the PPSH, that is returning. The STG-44 was recently confirmed, and of course, with the most recent beta trailer as well, showcased all of this on top of it. Factions some people had an issue with where there looked to be the intermingling of different factions where there were different fronts all on one team, but this was something that was confirmed that factions will not intermingle. For example, allied soldiers will always be on teams with allied soldiers, and Axis powers will always be on the same teams as Axis soldiers. There's not going to be any crossover there within. Another fun little tidbit of information is Canadian soldiers are actually confirmed for the game and potentially in the beta. Once again, 
odd little trivia, but I found it funny and a little interesting while digging around for things. The M1 Carbine was also confirmed for the beta, as was the Johnson LMG. That's confirmed to be playable here within all of this, once again, seen out of the beta trailer that we recently saw and dropped the other day. An interesting tidbit is that you actually cannot see your feet within the beta. This is going to be something that all throughout Call of Duty World War II, the view models will not go down to showcase your feet. Surprisingly, I saw some people actually complaining a little bit about this over on Reddit, but of course, it's not necessarily the biggest deal out of everything, but that you won't be able to see in the beta. Gas grenades will be present within the beta as well, and some additions to the beta could be made for further longevity. On top of that, we may get additional maps, because in the official Activision blog post, it's mentioned that there will be at least three maps, which, unless there's a possibility of more coming, and probably just one more if it is added, they would just say a strict three maps, not at least. It would be straight up, just three maps and additionally on top of that we may also get more modes in the beta as time progresses again worded ambiguously as to mention including tdm domination and hard points but if there's an argument on this one compared to the different maps being added in i think this one would be the first one to go since it's a little bit more vague and not necessarily intentionally as at least is it's more just ambiguous and vague. Moving forward though, progression will not carry over from the beta to the full launch of the game. This is something we've seen every single year thus far with the beta since Black Ops 3. So Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare's beta, progression did not carry over into the full game. And while that may upset some people, in the grand scheme of things, this is just a little bit of a play test for everybody so that they can see the feedback from the community make quick adjustments before they make the game go gold, whereas Infinite Warfare didn't actually do that. World War II is going to be able to as well, and so this is still really early hands-on stuff that you'll be getting, and not the final build of the game, whereas once again, Infinite Warfare kind of was. Leaks should be fairly minimal, if there's any at all, because there's no hint of PC beta just yet, and that's where the majority of the leaks end up coming out of. Now, it's a lot harder to get into the files of the game on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, whereas compared to PC, it's relatively easy, so hopefully a lot of that secret stuff that's still buried away in the game code stays secret and no surprises are spoiled by somebody digging through the game code but for the casual player that may not be the biggest concern here out of this winding down on the final couple facts though let's end up talking about how you end up getting it when you can get your stuff and anything else that we may miss here with this now to play simply all you have to do is pre-order you can cancel for most retailers but digitally i don't think you can and a lot of places only require like five dollars down or anything like that so you don't have to put sixty dollars away for the game just yet and of course you can still get your money back if you end up canceling your pre-order but that is the way to get it right now whether or not it becomes an open beta at any point in time that's happened before where there's been like an extra day added on or something like that but whether that happens or not we don't don't know just yet there's a possibility but right now just pre-order to end up playing redemption codes can be inputs at any point in time but are not the actual download codes actual physical download codes will more than likely go out to players about two to three days before the beta's launch perhaps expect an announcement of a pre-download at the beta stream on the 22nd from sledgehammer at gamescom maybe but that's just a little bit of an educated guess here but Definitely codes will start to go out in a few days time leading up to the launch of the beta. Now, download codes will be coming via email more than likely. That's what I've gotten every single time with mine. It's also quite possible that the download codes in the emails will feature more than one code. We've seen multiple cases of redemption codes granting you an email which will give you a code for one for you and up to three friends that, like we said, we've seen in previous betas. And finally, number 50, you'll end up getting to experience the revival of Call of Duty and hopefully restoring it to all its glory before the grand release of the game in November. So that said, that's been 50 Facts. Thank you guys so much for sticking around here. It's been a long video, I know, compared to other ones, but hopefully this provided a little bit more clarity and gave you guys some information that you may or may not have already known about, but hopefully you guys did enjoy most importantly. And if you did, make sure you drop a like down below. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Are you guys hyped for World War II's beta or do you not necessarily care 
all that much. If you guys are though and you're looking forward to World War II, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a beat. We're gonna be killing it here with the content for you guys regarding the beta. We got gameplay tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna be absolutely hammering down on the content. I'm so hyped. Hopefully you guys are as well too. And also, if Black Ops 3, Modern Warfare Master, and Infinite Warfare also interest you, stick around here so you don't miss a beat. And finally, if you guys wanna follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube, but practically live on Twitter. So if you guys wanna shook up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Nespresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.